Hey, what's up everybody? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we're going to be listening to this Wolves in the Throne Room BBC session. Um, Anio Damni. It's fucking amazing. Seriously. So killer. It was recorded, uh, I think a month before Celestial Lineage dropped or a month after. I'm not 100% sure, but... This is fucking killer. It's on this awesome red, like, marble vinyl. It's super fucking rad. But today we will be reviewing Wolves in the Throne Room's 2005 demo and just, you know, kind of retrospectively take a look at Wolves in the Throne Room from the 2004 demo to this demo to this masterpiece of, like, this is live. Besides their Live at Roadburn uh, album, which if you can find, get it. I know it's on YouTube, and it's, it's, there's a live video of it too. It's fucking amazing. If you've never seen Wolves in the Throne Room live, you'll be fucking so hyped on it, trust me. It's around, like, uh, when Two Hunters came out, so it's, like, two songs off of my, in my opinion, their strongest record, but the 2005 demo, this is fucking badass. First off, it is on this really sick clear vinyl. I can't even tell you that it's Van Records DE, um, I guess Denmark is the rec some label from Denmark put this out. But um, it has Queen of the Borrowed Light, Dagger of Amthurst Crystal, A Shimmering Radiance, and Didium of Twelve Stars, which is their debut record. So it's pretty much just a blueprint of the debut album, which was just reissued. But this is fucking killer. Like, it's just, the production is, is super fucking raw. It's it's what you would expect in, you know, a demo. And buying a demo on vinyl was something I actually questioned, because at first, like, I remember being like, why would I buy a demo? Like, you know, it's just a demo. And then I realized how important that shit is and whatnot, like, especially like with bands like Nihilist and stuff, like their demos are just fucking works of art. But it comes with this real cool, like, cardboard uh, picture sleeve. I don't want to take it out because it's, it's a legit pain in the ass to put back in. But it's just the uh, cardboard packaging. I mean, nothing too special. It's actually real flimsy. But the music is what fucking matters. And it's fucking killer. Like... If you like the first record and you want to just hear Werewolves in the Throne Room, like started really developing that sound you know that whole like what you're hearing right now like where this like atmospheric you know nature worshiping like you know kind of mystical epic black metal but yet super fucking grim production on the earlier versions of the songs and I don't know, I feel like 18-year-old uh, Fenris would be fucking in love with this demo. Like, I've only got a chance to listen to it a few times on vinyl, but I've heard it a fuckload of times online. It sounded killer on my record player, and so does this fucking album. I mean, it's only two songs, like, one on each side, but... The BBC does not fuck around, like, Southern Lord put out the vinyl, but like, oh my god, it's, it's so good, like, I listened to this before bed last night, and was just like, oh, I, I was loving it, like, I don't know. Wolves in the Throne Room are one of those bands where you just want to turn the lights out, and kind of just actually enjoy it for what it is let everything soak in and the more you listen to it the more you'll hear shit that you didn't hear before 
and whatnot. They're one of those bands, like, and it's fucking sick. Like, even on the demo, as raw and vicious as this is, it still is just beautiful at times. Like, it has those moments that make Wolves in the Throne Room one of the best U.S. black metal acts there is today. I mean, even though their last record wasn't even a black metal record, technically, it was more in line with, like, Tangerine Dream, Goblin, Zombie, you know, shit like that. It was amazing, though. But I heard it was, like, a companion piece to Celestial Lineage. And the name of the rest of the record, I'm pretty sure, was, like, uh... Celestite or Celeste? Yeah, I think it was Celestite. I forget off the top of my head. Um, but anyways, the versions of like Queen of the Bar of Light, like Queen of Bar of Light. But just like I said, if if you've heard the album versions, just picture a little less polished version of that song. It's pretty much on point of with what the album version sounds like. And it's awesome, like, when I heard this at first, I just was like, ah, like, like, the volume is a little bit low in the mix, but it's a fucking demo, so, like, you can't expect, you know, you know, awesomeness, like, not everything is Leviathan's How Mockery at the Cross, like, that compilation of demos is on another level of killer demos. This is a band seriously that found its footing finally like the 2004 demo it, it is what it is it's pretty decent but like I would I don't know if I would go out of my way to purchase it I mean maybe just to you know like have a copy of it physically and just to be able to hear those songs that way because it's you know the way Wolves in the Throne Room work I feel like especially with this like I said I feel like it's a blueprint and they built off of this into what became the Adam <laughs> Didium of the 12 stars or however you fucking pronounce it you know their first debut record is what I feel this really sets up great for like if you have Wolves in the Throne Room's discography in my opinion, like I said, Two Hunters is fucking the best, hands down. But the debut record's great, and they're one of those bands I don't think have ever put out anything where I was like, this sucks, you know, like, I forget what split it was, uh, Malevolent Grain with Hate Crystal. Hate Crystal, though, is my favorite Wolves in the Throne Room song. But it's on that EP, so it doesn't. I'm not counting that. Because Two Hunters as a whole, it's just an amazing experience to just sit there from start to finish. Just like this. Sitting in the dark last night, I just was in the woods in fucking the Great Northwest. It was. I, like, the turn. Like, they pretty much came up with this like whole Cascadian black metal sound like that Panopticon and stuff like really grabbed on to like you know it's awesome and it really stems originally from Immortal who wasn't they weren't singing about Satan they were singing about their fictional land of ice and cold like nature their natural surroundings, which is what Wolves in the Throne Room do so fucking well. They capture what it sounds like to be in the woods. Like, if you've ever been in a deep forest, like, I live in Pennsylvania. I mean, I live right outside Philly, so it's not crazy. But, you know, I spent some time in some woods, and it, it's awesome. And it really, really reminds me of being isolated in the woods and just I don't know it, it strikes a nerve with me in a good way it makes me happy and just some of the riffs and just song organization it's so fucking good it just it gives you goosebumps and that's why I really really love black metal 
it's just something that grabs a hold of you. At first, you might not like it, and you might resist it even, but you'll find yourself being like, oh, I really, you know, I'm in the mood to listen to that song. And like, before you know it, you're buying fucking Dark Throne albums and shit. It, it's pretty cool. Like, it's a genre I really suggest getting involved in. And just, if you don't know that much about it, looking up on, like, it's not just Norwegian second wave black metal. You have the first wave with like Sodom, Hellhammer, Bathory, fucking, there's so much history and awesome stuff that doesn't involve mayhem and burzum like seriously like even in the u.s like starting with judas iscariot like one of the first one-man black metal bands that i can think of from america more than positive heaven and flames is the first like u.s black metal album besides like some Granville isles key stuff but I'm not getting into that that stuff because yeah, I don't know. You know how I feel, but whatever. Not into it lyrically at all, so I don't discuss it. So, but anyway, they are a big part of the history of the United States black metal scene because, like, the songwriting is killer. It's just the lyrical content's bullshit. Racism stinks. I'm sorry. That's just my opinion. I mean, whatever. I don't want to get into politics or any of that bullshit. But you might say, well then, why do you listen to black metal? Like, a lot of those guys have pretty extreme views when it comes to politics. I don't. Like, I'm kind of uh, pretty, pretty picky of what I listen to black metal-wise. I do look into the bands pretty deep before diving in. Like, I mean, Krieg did a split with Satanic Warmaster, and Neil even came out and said, you know, like, hey, I said some stuff I probably shouldn't have said. Like, I was young, I was stupid, like, and, you know, I, I don't know what he said. I've never seen that split, but, it was something that he remembered and it was important enough for him to talk about in Decibel. And I know a lot of people give Neil a lot of shit and I don't really know why. I mean, yeah, he's a miserable dude, but like, listen to his music. I mean, it's like auditory misery. It's awesome. I love it. But I don't know what he used to really be into. Like, and I don't really care because like, Records like The Black House, like Blue Miasma, they're fucking just works of art. Like they're they're brilliant. I can't wait to fuck. I, like I've never even seen him lot in a live setting outside of doing a panel at Choosing Death Fest. So I'm very excited to see them live. And uh, yeah. Fucking Wolves in the Throne Room's demo, though. I got really thrown off. It's a killer fucking demo. Like, if you're gonna buy a black metal demo, go searching. Hopefully you find it. It shouldn't... I don't know how hard this is to find. I didn't really... I know that I got the last copy from Hell's Headbangers, though. And same with the BBC session you just heard. That was side A. Um, so, yeah. Great fucking records. Suggest them both. Wait until I review the BBC Wolves in the Throne Room vinyl. Thanks for watching, though. Hails.